I gotta get back to the hotel. You're not going anywhere, Ray. You've got pneumonia again. You're a very sick man. The hunger strike was my idea. It's hard on everyone, and I'm not there. I'm scared it'll fall apart. Ray, listen. Right now, the infection is localized in one segment of your lung. If we hit it hard with antibiotics and pulmonary therapy, we can stop it in its tracks, okay? Look. I'll go to the hotel, tell everybody what's going on, and I'll fill you in when I get back. Hey, Dr. Kulani, tell them I'll be home soon. Right. If you're just joining us, I'm into my third cup of coffee, and it's delicious. And I'm talking to Caitlin McGrath, a resident physician at the Kamehameha Hospital. Caitlin, you know only 15% of the doctors working today are women. Yeah, that's true, but the number's going up all the time. Is the job harder because you're a woman? Well, I think the bottom line is that it's hard work, no matter who you are. But uh, I think there are times that I'm treated differently than a man would be in my position. Sometimes it's subtle, sometimes it's not so subtle. Like? <sighs> You're going to get me in trouble here. Um, once when I was working in the ER, a man came in that had been badly slashed with a knife, and uh, I was sent in to stitch him up. And it was a first for me, so I was really scared, but I just decided I'd go for it. And um, the attending physician just took one look and came right over and took over for me, which was fine, but he said, McGrath, I sure hope you cook better than you sew. Huh. Well, I guess that sounds like something you might hear 10 years ago. Yeah. But... I think it's mainly hard for the traditional doctors who still cling to the idea that uh, medicine is a man's profession. Saracen Industries is well aware of the human factor. That's why I'm here today with what we consider a very generous offer. We're prepared to give each and every one of you three months rent-free at the Hikani Hotel. I'll repeat that. Three months rent-free. What's the catch? No catch. Just sign the agreement to vacate and you could be in your new home tomorrow. Who's going to pay to move my stuff? No problem. We'll pay everyone's expenses. I urge you all, don't miss out. This is a one-day-only deal. A one-day-only rotten deal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You good folks need a new home. We're willing to give you one. Rent-free. Three months. I think that's more than fair. Fair? You gotta be kidding. The Hikani Hotel is a rat-infested fire trap. It's a haven for drug dealers, an ice house, just like this place was before you folks cleaned it up. Now, don't go for it. Everyone, listen to Dr. Kalani. I lived at the Hikani. It's worse than the street. A lady my age was killed there last month. Shot in the head for her purse. All right. I made you people an offer. It's time to take it or leave it. The Hikani is not the answer. Frank, Betty, don't let Ray down. Don't let yourselves down. People stick together on this. You can win. I'm not moving. Yeah. I'm staying here. The message seems loud and clear to me. What do you think? I don't know who you are, mister. I offered these people a solution. I doubt you can. Costa, Ray Acosta, right? Never forget a face. <laughs> Your right arm, I remember. A few years back, you got me in the arm wrestling contest at Hank and Ernie's Hub. There was no contest. I beat you six out of seven. We had some big fun that night, huh? You can talk for yourself, buddy. I lost 50 bucks, bought you drinks all night. Hey, Ray, <laughs> what are you doing in here? Pneumonia. Good. A perfect chance for a rematch. 
Maybe I can beat you in your weakened state. I've been listening to your show. Interviews of the doctors and patients, good stuff. I was thinking maybe you could interview me. You want to tell about humiliating me at the hub, right? No. See, I've been living at the Teresa Hotel for nine years. Big corporation body. Want to evict everyone. Turn it into a tourist hotel. Oh, yeah. Oh, who really needs another hotel? Ray, you really are trying to do yourself in, aren't you? Just talking to my old friend, Duke. Well, if you're a friend, tell him to get back in bed and take it easy. Okay, Ray, you heard the doctor. Back to your room. You're gonna need your rest if you're gonna be on my show tomorrow. I am. I'm sorry I didn't call you when I first got here. Um, I was so jet-lagged I could hardly see straight. No, it's fine. I, I am too, really. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Ronnie. Uh, no, of course I miss you. Of course. Yes, I will. Bye. I had to call my sister. Oh, I would have said hello to her. Next time. She said to give the nice doctor a kiss. Let's go swimming. Can't. Gotta get dressed. Long drive ahead of us. We don't have to go, do we? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Big deal hospital stuff. But this one might be fun. And if it isn't, we can always make up for it after we get back. Oh, Daniel. What? Nothing, just oh, Daniel. <laughs> Come on. Something I want. Oh, Ronnie? Please. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Excuse me. Hey. Veronica, good to see you. Stan, how nice to see you. Oh, the symphony's back in town so soon? Time flies, but not that fast. Uh, we're scheduled for sometime in April, I think. Oh, Daniel, I'm sorry. This is Stan Sorrell. Glad to meet you. It's his corporation that helps keep our orchestra afloat. This corporation also is funding our new burn center. Well, then we're doubly grateful. Has uh, Maggie filled you in on the details of the plans for the burn center? It's going to be incredible. Excuse me, Maggie. This is our dance. Come on. You got it. All right. See you later. Your company is making it impossible for Excuse us to... Excuse me. I'm sorry. Um, your name again? Kalani. Daniel Kalani. Kalani. Well, what a coincidence. My company that you're so grateful to is Saracen Industries. Does that ring a bell, Doctor? Yeah, a loud one. I thought it might. I didn't appreciate that grandstanding stunt that you pulled today. I thought you and I were supposed to be on the same side. Which side is that? The one that turns poor people into homeless people? What's this all about? Well, your doctor friend here thinks that because my corporation doesn't provide housing for the poor, that we are evil. Big, bad villains. Well, that's nonsense. I know that Saracen heavily funds in the arts and sciences. I can't figure out why you're so hell-bent on rousting a hotel full of poor people out of the only home they have. Can you explain that to me? It's called business, doctor. And frankly, I think you need to get your priorities straight. You see, my company is not yet legally committed to that burn center that you're so excited about. Are you threatening me, Mr. Sorrell? Well, you can interpret it any way you wish, doctor. But remember this. If we do decide to take our funds elsewhere, your board of directors is going to know the reason why. Is that clear? Swell people you introduced me to. <laughs> I think I'll have a brandy. Not for me. You sure? I said no. 
For the last hour and a half, you've been on the warpath. What's going on? I know. I'm sorry. I needed to pick a fight with you. Why, for God's sake? Because I have something to tell you, and I don't know how to tell you. And it just seems that if you're angry with me, it's going to be easier. Well, I am, or was, so what is it? I, uh... There's someone in Switzerland. Ah, oh, this is awful. Uh... I met someone there and asked me to marry him. Who is he? A man, widowed, captain of industry. He says he loves me. What about you? Are you in love with him? He's crazy about me, Daniel take me on any terms. He doesn't care if I travel. He doesn't care if I'm gone for months on end. He doesn't care if I work. The question was, do you love him? He's a good man. I like him. No. It's not like it is with us. Ask me to marry you. Oh, Daniel, hold up. Well, you better head for the hills. What do you mean? I heard you took on that Saracen bigwig single-handedly last night. <laughs> He's upset. That guy Sorrell's been calling her office a half dozen times already. He's not a happy camper. I don't think he likes you. That's the good news. Uh, Maggie wants to see you. I better find him. Oh, here she is. Hi, Maggie. Maggie, here I am, ready to be drawn and quartered. I can't talk right now, Daniel. Oh, sorry. I thought you were looking for me. No, I wasn't. Maggie, what's wrong? Wrong? What could be wrong? It's a gorgeous day. All's right with the world. For everyone but Duke, he's not going to make it. Cancer again? Full force. In the remaining lung. Does he know it? Not yet. I'm really sorry. Yeah, me too. I'll handle it. Happens all the time. Aloha. This is Everyday People. And I'm Duke Algren, broadcasting live from the intimate confines of my hospital room at the Kamehameha. I don't regard myself as a journalist, never have, never will. A journalist sniffs out the big story. Me, I'm hooked on the little ones. But the big story came into this hospital came right into my room. That story is a man named Ray Acosta. He's with me right now. Welcome. Thanks, Duke. I want to say hello to my friends at the Teresa Hotel. Ray, why don't you tell us about you and your friends and the Teresa Hotel? Saracen Industries is trying to evict us, put us out into the streets, but we're not standing still for it. No way. A lot of my listeners may know you, or at least they've seen you at the Kahanamoku Beach doing your work. Yeah. I'm the guy under the umbrella with a sketch pad on my lap and jazz on my tape deck. Yeah, you're a sketch artist, aren't you? I do faces. Always been fascinated with faces. I see a face. 
I can get it down on paper pretty good. Ray, why is the Teresa Hotel so important to you? Why don't you just move to a different hotel? There are no hotels like the Teresa. When I moved in there, oh, I was in real bad shape. My wife and my son were killed in a car crash. I survived, but I didn't want to. I came to the Teresa to lose myself. <laughs> Instead, <laughs> I found myself. I found friends. You see, the Teresa is, it's not just any place to us. We keep it up, paint it, looking pretty, just like it was when it was first built. No matter how tough it gets, everyone always kicks in to pay the bills. We've never had a day without electricity the whole time I've been there. We make sure the phone's always paid up and working. Why not? It's our home. And we're proud of it. Then these Saracen people come along. Right. They want you out. Yeah. Why would anybody want to do that to another human being? Take away their home. listening to this program at home or on the job, I'm asking myself about now, what can I do? Dr. Kulani, why don't you tell our audience how they can help? Well, if you're a writer, write about it. If you're a reporter, report it. If you're a lawyer, we need your services, so please volunteer. But on the other hand, big businesses like Saris and Industries can do something. And that's something Listening to the radio Ray market. Costa and his friends at the Teresa Hotel, part of those homeless statistics. So was I, in the car, held captive by the voice of Daniel Kolani. I want this stopped now. The show will be over in 20 minutes, Stan. You know what I'm talking about. I want the man to keep his nose out of my business. I will ask him to... No, don't ask him. You tell him. You want that burn center, Margaret? You tell him to back off. Do I make myself clear? <laughs>